the stage uh, looking for master's programs abroad. But uh, I'm going to do a very brief overview over here. So I'm going to share my screen and talk a bit about uh, what you guys need to know um, in case you plan to apply for your master's programs this year. Um, and then I'll give you room to ask a few questions uh, related to the requirements and related to how you prepare and how you finance these types of programs. So um, just uh, keep noting down what I say along the session, and then you can ask your questions in a short while. Um, okay, so uh, if you're here today, I'm pretty sure you know what 8B is about. Um, of course, it be about supporting African students to uh, get access to global institutions and also to get a chance to work in uh, different geographies. So uh, it be operates across Africa, but we have the largest presence in Ghana, uh, Uganda, Kenya, and uh, Nigeria. Um, <clears throat> so. Um, if you go to our website, you will see a couple of different resources uh, that you can take advantage of uh, at no cost. So the first thing you can see here, yeah, as, as I've indicated on my screen, is uh, a database of scholarships. So I know most of you are looking for scholarships. I know it's not easy for African students to afford um, international education because it's very expensive. Like, the average cost in the US, for example, is around $50,000 per year. And if you're going for a two year program, that's almost $100,000. So not everyone can easily afford that amount of money. And even in Europe, where it's much cheaper, where it's like 15,000 euros per year, that's still a lot of money for most of us. So uh, scholarships are very important. So when you're doing a shortlist, when you are trying to look for a place that has a program you're interested in, it's also very important for you to keep in mind um, whether there are scholarships being offered there. And the 8B database of scholarships makes it much easier for you to narrow down these options. So if you just go to the website, 8B.Africa, then you click on the financing section, you'll be able to access the scholarships database for free. So that's one of the main benefits of being uh, a member of this uh, 8B community. Uh, the second thing you can access is the lending marketplace. So 8B is primarily a lender. So we give education loans to African students who want to do their uh, master's degrees in the US only. So if you want to go to Canada or Europe or other places, uh, we can't finance you at this time, uh, but we can support you to apply to those other places. But in case you're interested in going to the US, you can come to our lending marketplace and you'll be able to see um, different rates. So you'll see uh, lenders like Empower, Prodigy, uh, and ourselves. You'll see our rates, you'll be able to compare and you'll be able to select uh, the right option for you. So uh, different lenders have different terms. So some lenders uh, have, for example, a 10 year repayment period, others have an eight year repayment period. Some have 13% uh, interest rate, others have 10%. So uh, it's up to you to look uh, at the different offerings and see what makes the most sense for you. Uh, in general, I advise students to avoid taking large amounts of loans because they can be a big burden later. So make sure that you apply for as much scholarships as you can get from the institutions you're interested in. Make sure you also apply for graduate uh, teaching assistantships because these, these are basically like work study opportunities. You have a chance to work while you're studying, and this can really help you to offset some of the uh, expenses like accommodation, things like books. Uh, they can help you with that. So uh, in general, try to minimize the amount of education loans you take um, because they can end up being quite burdensome later. Uh, so try to keep it as low as possible. Possibly don't go beyond $20,000 per year. Uh, I would say that's the most you should borrow, uh, especially if you're in the US. Um, with, for the rest of the money that you need, try to get it through scholarships. As you know, scholarships is money that you're given by institutions and you don't have to pay it back. So this is basically free money um, which you get from 
institutions and sometimes from private foundations like Mastercard Foundation or the Gate Cambridge Foundation, uh, Mandela Washington, and many others. So um, I highly encourage all of you to make sure that you keep your eye out on those types of opportunities. There's no reason you shouldn't be able to qualify for them. I know so many people have qualified for them before. Uh, if you have good grades and if you put the effort into your application, you can actually get these opportunities. Um, the third item you can see on my screen is the 8B community where we have uh, mentors and we have also uh, a jobs marketplace where basically once you graduate um, or if you're looking for an internship, you can go there and you can see various opportunities. Um, okay. So those, those, that's a brief summary of what's available um, via the 8B website. I'll go to the next slide and uh, we'll talk a bit about the application timeline. So I know uh, some of you have probably graduated from uh, your bachelor's degrees, and I know uh, others might still be maybe in their value of or four years. Um, so it doesn't matter where you are, uh, you can start uh, your application as early uh, as the year or even uh, as late as five years after graduation. It doesn't really matter. There is no timeline. Even 10 years after you graduated, you can still apply for your master's if you want, right? If you think it will, it will make a difference in your professional uh, or in your career uh, goals, I think it's worth taking a shot. So the right time to apply uh, depends on the destination you're applying for. Um, but in general, if you are targeting institutions in US, Canada, Europe, most of them are open between August and January. And um, most of them tend to have strict deadlines, which are between around November, December, and others have them in January. So uh, I encourage students to apply to universities which have strict deadlines because these ones tend to have more financial support compared to institutions which receive applications throughout the year. So institutions which receive applications throughout the year, uh, that's called rolling admissions, they tend not to be very competitive. So they won't have much money to offer you uh, as a student from Africa. So try to apply to institutions which have more strict deadlines. Uh, okay. So, in terms of key documentation, what you should be preparing for at this time that we are talking, uh, by now you should be able to navigate to, first of all, you should be able to do your own research and shortlist at least 10 universities that you that you see have the program you want. So let's say I want to do a master's in data science, or master's in computer science, or whatever it is. Um, I will be, I will look for a short list of at least 10 universities which are really good in those uh, areas that I'm interested in. And then uh, from there, I will go to each university's website, create an application, and then from there, I'll start filling out whatever details they need. So they might need, for example, my name, date of birth, institutions I've attended before, grades I've been, subjects I've studied, all that personal stuff. So you should be individually on your own, you should be able to do that. Find a university, go to the website, and create an application by yourself. So the first thing is filling out the online application form. Quite basic, you guys are digital natives, you know how to navigate the internet, you know how to do your own research. It should not be a very complicated thing. Um, <clears throat> the second item, which is very important, is uh, something called a statement of purpose. It is basically an essay, quite a long essay, uh, around 600 to 1,000 words. You have to write clearly explaining why you've chosen uh, your um, program of study. So let's say I've taken a master's in public health. Why do I want to do a degree in this area? And second, uh, why have you chosen to do that degree in that particular institution? So you have to do that research on the institution and write an essay, a convincing essay, not just something regurgitated from AI, something original that actually uh, answers the question of why this particular school, why have you chosen Harvard and not Johns Hopkins for your master's in public health? 
do you have convincing reasons for choosing Harvard? Or did you just choose it because you hear it's a top 10 school, right? So you don't want to uh, apply to a school just because you've had it popular. You need very concrete reasons. Uh, and those concrete reasons could be things like, it has to be aligned with your interests, right? Let's say I want to do maybe re do research in something like, uh, I don't know, immunology. And you know, this particular university has a very good center for research in this area. Uh, of course, um, you have to make that connection, right? I'm choosing to apply to this particular institution because they have this research center. They have this professor who does this and that and that. Uh, they have these alumni who are well networked in the industry, all those things. So you have to do very thorough research on the institution and make sure that you uh, show that you have actually done that research in your ASCC. That's what will make you stand out. Don't just write something generic that anyone can write. Don't copy paste something from ChatGPT because uh, the evaluators will definitely know you have used AI. So you need to actually write by yourself. Uh, then the next item here, as you can see, is academic transcripts. These are very important. These are basically your grades from uh, first year up to fourth year of university. They're very important as well. Um, if you don't have them yet, it's OK. Um, institutions usually allow you some time to submit them. So even if you end up submitting them next year, that's totally fine. Um, the next thing is letters of recommendation. This one should be written by your lecturers or your professors. And if you have done some work experience or say some internship experience, you should always uh, request for your supervisor to write a recommendation for you. Uh, in general, recommendation letters need to be substantive. By that, I mean they need to be at least one page long or at least one and a half pages. And they should go into detail about your qualities as a student and what makes you stand out. So why do you stand out as a student? Uh, do you have very unique problem solving skills? Do you uh, you know, have a very um, proactive approach to research, to research, ETC, things like that. So it has to be your, a quality that you have and an illustration. That is an example. If a professor says you are a very hardworking student, what is the proof of your hard work? What did you do as an undergraduate student to actually show that you are hardworking? If they say you are a very innovative thinker, what did you actually innovate in your time as a student? So empty words will not work. Everything that your professors write or lecturers write must be supported by some evidence that you actually did what they are saying uh, that you did. So that's the key thing to keep in mind in terms of recommendation letters. So make sure that your recommended recommenders know that what is expected is something substantive, not one or two sentences saying you're an above average student. That's not the kind of recommendation that's required. Uh, the next thing is uh, financial documents, uh, standardized exams. So by standardized exams, I mean uh, something like GRE, which is a graduate record exam. It's a basic test of your mathematical and uh, English skill. And then there's one called TOEFL. Uh, this one is uh, strictly just a test of your level of English. So how well can you communicate, write, speak, listen uh, to English language? Um, TOEFL can be replaced or substituted by IELTS or Duolingo tests or Pearson tests. There are many options. Um, <clears throat> GMAT is usually for people who want to go to business school or management schools. And there's another one called uh, LSAT for people who want to go to law school. And another one called MCAT for people who want to go into medicine. So there are various uh, criteria for uh, these types of exams. So you have to make sure that you look into what does the university want and have you um, prepared it. Uh, the next thing, so just quickly to remind you that 8B offers GRE and 12L discount vouchers. So we give you discount vouchers that you can use to register for these exams and take them at no cost. So it's very important to keep that in mind. Uh, the next thing is financial documentation. This should not be something you submit in advance because if you're applying for a scholarship, 
uh, you are not expected to show proof that you can pay for the tuition, right? Because the first, the reason why you are applying for a scholarship, it's because you cannot afford the uh, tuition. So uh, typically these, uh, these documents are asked after you get admitted. So they want to see that if they have given you a certain amount of scholarship, they want to see if you have money to pay for the remaining amount. If they have given you a hundred percent scholarship, they won't ask for any proof of financial support. You will just use the letter, the scholarship letter that you get. You will use it to apply for your F1 visa, uh, which is basically a student visa from whatever embassy you are applying, whether it's the US or Canada or whatever embassy you are applying for. You will use the scholarship letter. That will make it easy for you to get the visa without too much hassle. Uh, the last thing uh, is your resume. Of course, all of you here, I'm assuming you have resumes of CVs. Um, if you don't have one, make sure you prepare one because it's uh, an important document when you're doing these kinds of applications. Um, there's no particular format you have to follow, but if you're applying to the US, yeah, it's better to keep it brief. Uh, they're, they're usually used to one page CVs, um, but if you're applying to other places, you can just use other formats. Just make sure it's detailed, clear, well organized. Um, you can find many templates online to help you with that. All right, so I'm not going to talk much about GPA conversion, but uh, what you need to keep in mind is that some institutions, for example, Northeastern, they require you to basically convert your grades into American type of grades. Uh, so for that, you have to use some credential services like Scholaro or World Education Services. These basically take your transcripts, whether they're from Uganda or from Nigeria or from Ghana. Uh, they take your transcripts, evaluate each course you did and put it on a 4.0 scale, uh, which is basically the scale that they use in the US. So yeah, this is usually not a mandatory thing. I just thought I would highlight it. Um, so I'm not going to go much deeper into the essays because I already talked about them. You have to be introspective. You have to do your research about the programs you're applying for. Um, yeah, just basic things. Uh, some schools have interviews. For example, I know many Ivy Leagues like Harvard or Brown uh, University, they have interviews. Also, if you apply for prestigious scholarships like MasterCard Foundation and you get shortlisted, you have two. Uh, do some interviews. So in case you're invited for interviews, make sure you prepare the way you prepare for a job interview. Make sure that uh, you know you do very thorough research on the university or the program. Uh, make sure that when you talk, you highlight your unique strengths uh, as a student. Uh, make sure you ask some clarification questions or some insightful questions to your interviewer. And of course, make sure that you're professional, you arrive on time. Once the interview is over, make sure you also send a thank you note to the interviewer. So that these are basic things that you need to keep in mind uh, when you are applying to this institution. Uh, okay, so these are some examples of universities which are very popular with African students. Uh, you can check them out. We have a much longer list on the AB website. You can go there and check out some options we have. Uh, it depends on the um, program that you're applying for. Some of these schools are good at certain programs and they're not so good at others. So you have to make sure that you find universities that have uh, strong programs in your area of interest. So uh, I will end my presentation at this point. So if you want to learn more, just go to our official website, www.8b.africa. Uh, you can also join our online community. So you can download the app, 8 Community App, or you can just go uh, to our uh, to the website my.8b.africa so my.8b.africa and you can sign up if you have not already signed up i know many of you are already signed up maybe that's how you saw uh, this event and if you want to apply for gr and TOEFL vouchers you can apply via the link here or you can just put the website go to the footer section and you'll be able to see the correct link to apply for there vouchers that I mentioned. So the vouchers pay for the full amount of the cost of these exams. So they are very good uh, for someone who cannot afford to pay for the exams. So with that said, 
I, I'll end the presentation and ask whether any of you has a question and I'll answer it before we end this meeting. So anyone with a question, please go ahead. Hello. Um, <clears throat> you know, okay, some of these universities they can ask for an admission fee. So, do you also have preferred admission fee or it can be waived? Okay, that's a good question. So, if you cannot afford to pay the $50 or $60 or $70 that's required for the application fee, uh, make sure that you contact the admissions office or the financial aid office of the university that you're applying for you can just email them or you can find the email of one of the staff there email them tell them about your predicament uh, tell them you can't afford and you need an application to waiver most of them will consider you especially if you come from africa or if you have attended their online events they will give you an application fee uh, code that you can use to get the fee wavered so yes it's possible to get it wavered personally i've never used any i've never paid any application fee i always get waivers so it's possible okay uh, Stephen. okay thank you um but i want to find out um the services you provide hb provides uh do they come at a cost and then what particular services do you provide? How, if someone is interested in applying to schools, how can the person proceed? Thank you. Uh, okay, that's a good question, Stephen. So uh, as I mentioned in the beginning of this session, uh, first of all, 8B has a lot of free services. So we don't charge you, for example, to use our scholarship database to find the universities uh, and to find the uh, good scholarships for you we also don't charge students to get the free discount vouchers so you can basically take the TOEFL exam and the GRE exams for free through us and um, what we charge for is if you end up needing an, an education loan and you apply and you get it from us you will basically be charged a service fee of five percent and of course you'll pay back the education loans with interest so uh, that's the only stage where you'll be charged. Otherwise, for the rest of the services, you won't really get charged. So uh, that's what you should know about our services. And you can learn more on the website. If you go to Africa, you should be able to learn more. And uh, to quickly clarify, uh, HB Education is not uh, an agency. So we don't really handhold you through the process of applying to universities. We don't, uh, we expect you to be able to uh, do this uh, mostly by yourself. Uh, so things like, you know, finding schools for you, reviewing your essays, all that, we don't really get that close. We give you general advice and we expect you to be more proactive in actually completing the steps by yourself. So uh, that's how I would respond to your question, uh, Stephen. Uh, any, uh, any other questions before we wrap up this session? Okay, so uh, thank you guys for coming. Um, this was very interactive. Uh, in case you have further questions, you can email me. My email is uh, Elijah at 8b.finance. Um, I will be able to respond to any other questions you have either related to financing or to 8B services or even related to the exams, the GRE and TOEFL exams. If you're interested in the vouchers, you can also connect with me. I'll be able to help you through the process. Um, so with that said, um, we usually have these kinds of events every other week. So be on the lookout in our online community. You'll be able to see the advertisements I put there. And if you are interested, you can join us. Sometimes we have staff from US institutions, 
and they can present they do present about their universities so you can also engage with them directly ask them questions uh, they'll be able to help you also with things like application fee waivers and whatnot so um you guys have a lovely evening and in case of further questions just send them to my email i'll be happy to respond uh thank you everyone and have a good evening